hello and welcome. Let's talk about the bench press. I'm gonna draw a couple of quick sketches on the whiteboard and I'm gonna talk you through a couple of points of performance that you can use to make the bench press both safer, more harmonious with your joints, and then also to increase your performance, to boost up how many pounds you're able to lift or how many reps you're able to do in the course of a workout. All right, first and foremost, let's talk about the beginning position of the bench press. Now, here's a quick sketch. I'm gonna start off with the bench like this on the ground. Now, if a person is doing the bench press, we start at the beginning, we can see the feet are flying the shins vertical. We have a very marker here. I'll tell you what, we'll see if we can go straight to the bench. Now, okay, let's use your hands, let's use your hands, let's use your hands. Here's what we want, foot flat on the floor, shin vertical. We're looking at the body from the side. So this is gonna be the kneecap, the thigh, the pelvis. Here's the spine, and that's gonna put our head right about at the end or the edge of the bench. Now, finally, the last bit is to have our shoulder joint right here. I'm gonna give a solid dot, the upper arm, the elbow, the lower arm, and then the fingers. And what we're gonna see as we do that initial beginning point of the bench press, a very strong foundational position. There should be good alignment right here through this vertical line, and there should be good alignment right here through that line of the forearm, the elbow, and the shoulder. Now, as we go into the bench press, the range of motion for the arm is actually gonna change. So as we descend the barbell down, it's important for us to keep our forearm vertical. And what that means is that at the bottom, we're gonna end up with something that looks a little more like this, the hand, the upper arm, and then the elbow. And now we have that arm and that shoulder. And so the reason that I show this is because we really want to think about the idea that this barbell goes from above our shoulder and it's gonna to move towards our hips as it descends, touches our chest, and then as it ascends and goes back to the starting position, it's gonna move back to that alignment over the shoulder. Now, the reason that this is important is because we always need our forearm to be vertical from elbow to wrist. As we're moving the bar down, we can't just bring it straight down from above our shoulder, straight down to our chest. It has to go towards our feet a little bit. So the bar is always gonna have this motion where it goes slightly towards the feet as it comes down towards the ground. Now, if we move on and we look at the bench press from another view, let's take this, instead of from the side, let's look at it from the feet. So we're basically looking at you from head to toe. We would see that the bar of the bench would be here. And then for our legs, we should make sure that if our pelvis is on that bench, and again, we're looking, oh man, I gotta throw this marker in the trash. If we're looking at the pelvis, basically looking up the legs, and we're gonna see here the upper leg, the lower leg, and the foot. And so here's our kneecap, kneecap on the other side, and the foot. And so what I want to exemplify to you here is that we have that same vertical position of the shin. Finally, if we continue this up and we look at the structure of that weightlifting bar, that would be here. If we're doing a barbell bench press, it would look something like this, right? And we would see that the hands are gonna be a little wider than shoulder width as they're gripping the bar. The arms are gonna come down and they're gonna connect in to the shoulder. And so once again, if my drawing is any good for you, we should be able to see that that arm is vertical from elbow to wrist. And even as we bring that bar all the way down until it touches the chest, then it's gonna remain vertical at the forearm until we press back up. Now, a couple of notes of performance that can really help to push your bench press to the next level. Now, whenever I talk about going a little bit heavier, we always want to mandate our good technique because it keeps us safe. And the thing that always excites me as a coach is that the proper technique for safety is almost always the same as our proper technique for best performance if we're factoring in the longevity of our training. So, so you may be able to lift a little bit more with the compensation, but it's gonna wear you out, and ultimately it's gonna have you end up with an injury, which might prevent you from training at all. So, just like we talk about in the folk stories, slow and steady wins the race. I want you to train safely so you can train for a long time, because ultimately, being able to work out consistently is what's gonna get you your best results. Now, to boost things up, to go a little bit further, let's zoom in on this picture of the view from the side. I'm gonna give us another layer of that bench. Here's the feet and the legs of the bench as we come down. Now, what we're gonna look at here is our spinal position. So if we draw again, the body position, foot flat, vertical shin, here's the kneecap, the femur. I'm gonna give the pelvis as a circle. 
And then you'll see I kind of draw a squiggly line here and then we'll come here to the head. So we'll give an eye and a little smiley face. There's the hair. Makes it easy for us to uh, see what's going on here. Now, this curve, as we look at this spine, it almost looks a little bit like a, uh, the arch of your low back and then the arch of your upper back. And I've exaggerated it here to make it easy to see. While we're doing our bench press, we wanna try to compress this space underneath the low back as much as possible. And so this arch, we'll have a natural arch in the low back. We're gonna to try to collapse that space down so that we know that our spine is firmly braced against that nice line of the bench. Now, I'm gonna add in a color here, red. This is gonna be our active muscles. When we're in our bench press for our best performance, active muscles include starting from the feet here, along the back of your leg, along the back of your upper leg, your glutes, the entirety of your core here in front, because we're trying to press that space downward, compress that little area. And then finally, of course, your chest and shoulders here as you're working at pressing that bar up to the ceiling. Now, the last bit is that anytime we're working the chest and shoulders, we have to have that contraction in the upper back because that upper back is helping to keep the chest contraction creating arm movement only. Remember, your chest here is strong enough to pull your whole shoulder out of position, so the upper back has to be contracted at the same time, so that when the chest contracts, the only thing that happens is your arm movement. That's because of the attachment points of all these muscles. So the upper back keeps the shoulders in the right place, and that puts all of the force into arm movement. That's really what we're looking for. So anytime that I approach the bench press, I'm gonna look for the entirety of my foot flat on the floor. I'm gonna make sure that once I'm laying back on that bench, I feel like I'm gonna push my heels down against the ground. Once I'm laying down flat, <clears throat> I clench the cheeks, the butt cheeks as tightly as I can, and I'll squeeze the abs, really push my low back against the floor. The next step up the checklist is to pull your shoulder blades into that retraction. And sometimes the barbell actually helps with this because as you take it out of the rack, it's gonna force your shoulders down. You can feel that retraction being encouraged. Solidify that with your muscle strength and now you're ready for that first bench press. When you're in that bench press, remember that it may start above your chest, but it's gonna move south a little bit as your elbow bends. Once it touches low and you press back up, then it's gonna come back into that alignment directly above the shoulder. During the actual execution of the bench press rep, while you're lifting the weight, I like to look at a fixed point in space, something solid and immobile. If you try to watch the objects that you're lifting, whether it's dumbbell or barbell, it can get a little bit unstable. But look at the ceiling, look at something that's not moving, and press strongly through your hands there. That will help to make you a bit more stable. Finally, as you're going through your bench press, the last two things to think about, and I know this can get almost to the point of overwhelm, but if I'm on a barbell or if I'm on dumbbells, the last two things I'm going to think about are number one, creating rotation. So I have a bit more stability in my shoulder joint. Now the rotation won't happen because you'll be fixed against those objects, but the resulting counter force will be the stability that we want. And then the second thing that I think about is the breathing of the timing. I'm sorry, the timing of your breathing. <laughs> so let's talk about rotation. If I'm gripping that barbell and I try to break that bar in half, like a, like a stick that I'm breaking for a uh, kindling for a fire. If I'm trying to break the bar, obviously it won't break, but what will happen is I'll try to rotate. And since I can't rotate, I'll get this ensuing stability at the shoulder joint. It's almost like if I take the fabric here and I twist my shirt, once we rotate, it causes more um, tension in the fibers of that fabric. So the tiny bit of rotation, trying for that twist that doesn't happen, that adds stability to your shoulders. Secondly, when you're breathing, I like to breathe in between repetitions. So I'll lock in a lung full of air, I'll tighten my abs and I'll compress all that air, hold on to it, perform my repetition, and then once I've locked my elbows, I got that weight back to the top, then I'm gonna breathe in and out for subsequent repetitions if I'm doing more than one in a row. Now, as you're working on your bench press, remember that the range of motion is important. We do wanna be able to go through the full motion, but it's not critical for you to train full range every single training session. Sometimes it's okay to go half as deep and a little heavier, get your body used to that extra load. Sometimes it's great to go all the way down, come up a little bit, and then go down again and force yourself to work twice as often in that range of motion where it's the most challenging. Those are all great variations because at the end of the day, what we're really trying to do is strengthen the muscles of your chest. So this zone from the center of your sternum all the way to where my shirt sleeve would be, we wanna draw those two points closer together. We wanna use that muscle contraction to shorten the distance. 
When we're doing that, we would lose our shoulder position unless our upper back is there as well. So we're clenching back there. Now we have tension in the front and tension in the back. And because of this anatomical connection, the last thing to move is the arm. That's what's gonna press that weight up to the ceiling. So if you're doing your repetitions, if you're practicing or visualizing, think about those muscles of the chest. Think about bringing those arms towards each other as you press up. Now, with the dumbbells, you'll be able to move the hands narrower as they lift up, but the barbell, this won't be possible. And this is one of the variations that we get with different training tools. So whether you're using dumbbell or barbell, think about tightening up the chest, bringing the hands closer together, finding that rotation so you get the stability. Keep your low back flat on the floor, keep your feet pressing against the ground, synchronize your breathing, and you'll be constantly preparing your body for that execution of all those heavier reps. And I know it can be tough when there's a lot to think about, but make it small chunks at a time, work on stepping your way up, and over time, with a lot of concentrated practice, this kind of behavior, this kind of movement pattern will be your normal pattern. It will be your default operating pattern. So it will happen without needing so much of a thought process. All right, hope this was helpful. Let me know your results as you keep working and building up the bench press. See you next time.